of it our first round it is going to be rage quit on the defensive side with artillery fairly uncommon and thing on the offense yeah, my expectation is for uh rage quit to go to the forest with this but they might surprise me as they do <laughs> as they do <laughs> it's highly uh we've seen people play with rt on that side they usually put it on a8 but i i don't like those positions i mean they can decap mostly but they're easily flanked there they are easily flanked and now the question is going to be how does Ding respond to this now? See already, fairly common split here. You can see a lot of things from Rich are moving towards that hill. Now, I, this could actually catch Ding really hard, Mojo. If they like all push over the hill, but three or four guys, that's Wong Tank down and Chase on Hulk. We already noted that some of the teams like to just overstay their welcome there. It's fine when you have two or three guys supporting you, but when there is only one guy trying to land the shots and uh, we already said that if some team pushes really aggressive on top of the hill and below there is no way out of that and positive will positive build the first one to find out uh, that our words are true i really want rage queen now to group up as a team and basically just push straight over here it's a risk that none of the teams took so far and they all they allowed to look the, at the enemy team to come in already. Ding is already there. Now now it's already a problem and it's a timer timing missed. It's a timing missed for Rage Quit here now. If they do it now, there'll be two batches waiting. If they just went straight, plus an only be one. one. Let's not forget that one also. That's a lot then that's a really hard trade. For that one budget, it's worth the while for Ding. If before that it would be positive dying and maybe at best case they would kill one kill one guy. At best case. What is it? What is the trigger here for Rage Quit? Cap. Cap, 100%. They're waiting for a uh, trigger because uh, Ding used to trigger the one cap with their uh, Object 140s so far. And uh, then I would believe Rage Quit would just push with all the guys and just try to spot with one for RT. Pulling back? Pulling everybody back so far, Rage Quit. Uh, it's a very weird start here. Well, it could say. be interesting if they're reading the ding actions well, and if the cap starts, they actually might push with everyone on A-line. Who are they going to send to spot the cap, though? They are in no position right now everyone. to deal with the cap. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ding taking their sweet time. Kurit's being spotted. That's an interesting one. Now Ding, Ding I cannot really make out any plan here for, for HQ. That's no, I'm still waiting to see what's the final plan here. Now, really wondering what HQ is going to do now. Ding's tank, in the beginning there was one. Now there is six, pretty much, within now in 20 seconds. They gave a lot of ground to uh, Ding, um, Ding so I far. think Urwis and Seba are going to be in trouble. Yeah, we already spoke about those TVPs. They're a nice tank if you want to stop someone from pushing and you have clear targets and someone ahead of you to take damage. But if you need to pick out to shoot with that turret, not gonna happen. Like everyone can pen. Everyone. Looks like Rage Quit wants to take the overmatch here though. A lot of tanks getting spotted out, but those 140 is already starting to pepper a little bit. And positive is in the back lines there, as we said before. And here they come. Here comes Rage Quit. They want to go forwards. Halu already taking a lot in this one. Halu goes down. 4 HP, 6 HP left here as he goes down. This push is not working out so far from Rage Quit. Cactus is the next one to fall. Break goes low as well. But number one skills goes down on return. This push didn't work out at all. It was very obvious for Ding. They got everybody ready. And it doesn't look like the approach for Rage Quit in the first round was the correct one. It's a perfect trade for Ding. They lost one guy and uh, one on lower HP for three Clippers that practically did no damage. Also positive, still in their back, back alive on 100%, probably close to the reload by now. Those TVPs completely useless and out of the fight the entire time. RT not used as well. Rich quit waiting way too long to make their play here, getting catched out by the complete team from Ding. They only made the play in the beginning. There was one guy waiting. When they made it, there were six of them. Now these TVPs, there's not much they can do in this one. They can't kill anybody by themselves. Seba's landing a few shells here, has one more. Misses that one as well. He should be going down here. Always soon to follow. Kremak in that low range. Think he's done for as well. Can he pick up Kuritz though? Nope. Only 490. Yes, Kuritz 
picks up Gramic. Uru is the last one standing here. And it is going to be Rage Grid not picking up the first round. It's going to be Ding. 6,000 HP advantage. It really looked like an easy stroll for Ding. They didn't show much. They did few rotations. And then Rage Grid more or less hung themselves up. Uh, they did a rookie mistake. They didn't clear the hill from positive. So that in the start, they, as we said, if they did a risky push, as they if know they to do... If they just did in the beginning, they would have had a free kill. they just played their own playstyle. Yeah, if they just pushed, they would have had a free kill there. And, and maybe even another one. Like, f their position wasn't that bad. Like, for example, if they push straight from the zero line, they kill positive. Pretty sure about that with four bad he, shots. He's and then those the TVPs just drive to the rails. Hulk tries to run away. He's dead as well. That's two tanks advantage. Yes, but of course they don't see the map as we do. But uh, in this but reality, no, it, it, was, it was yeah. it was uh, okay to try and do that. If you want to clear the hill, that's the best way. But if they even if Ding is not there, they have free hill control. Like if Ding's not yeah, there, yeah, they, nice. We then have control. they know. Okay, Ding is trying to cap the other side. We still have the RT. We can even be late. We can even afford to be late because Arty will take the DK for us. And it's not like it's super uncommon for a bad shot to be on the zero line with one bad shot in support. Yeah, it's really predictable stuff. So I think they kind of look scared in this match too much. We, I said it when we came into it. I really hope they can stick to their play style. Now this counter push was not good. But there is one more thing. They often start with losses. Oh yeah, they give the enemy <laughs> two against the wild bunch. It was they gave three. The Hulk. Against the wild bunch, it was three. Then yep. they give two. Maybe they should give one to them. Just one? Just one. At I least four, mate. At least four. <laughs> for Ding, at least four. I really don't think they can afford more than one free round. Yeah. Let's take a look at stats, though. Mojo, who do you have on your fancy team, fancy team from Cactus, these? Cactus, of course. By the way, I think I sold break and I took positive instead. I had to sell break because I had to fund my failures of the other players. <laughs> I had to sell break because he wasn't doing any damage, so I took positive instead. Uh, good pick, mate. Good pick. I think so, at least. Thinking like I think I'm still beating you. I'm like rank 70 or something. Mrakar would be like a good investment for everyone. Yeah. As long as I'm beating you, it doesn't really matter. It's, you're just obsessed about that. I mean, in the end of the season, I'll be before you. You'll be behind me. And yeah, I'll be pretty happy. I'll just kick you in the back. Uh, <laughs> but here, Positive had an easy field day from behind there, landing a lot of shells. Easy game for him. Easy game for him. Those TVPs, a lot of that damage is late round damage. Not important at all. We can Look see at there. this. Number skills. one skills. Got tracked Halu. before he even get to the, got to the rail. Halo while Halo and Cactus. Cactus actually took most of the damage then, but then he remained on one shot for a surprising amount of time on that 5 HP. He actually managed to land shells in that time and Halo right after him. Not a cool day and not a cool game for Rage Quit here. Come on, guys. I'm expecting much more from you. Now... We can already explain Ding's tactic in the next round, pretty much, because it's going to be... Defense on Prokhorovka? <sighs> they didn't change it a single time They didn't so change far. it a single like time. Like, not even on one game, and I'm, they played quite a lot. I'm going to keep criticizing the fact that they don't change at least one tank to change it up, at least. I don't like it when a team just plays same, 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 same. Um, Rucker was saying they feel so confident that they and are actually just them already playing against the KB. Against a really good team? It's going to cost them even more. Uh, yeah, but against a really good team, uh, they, they can actually strats. change everything. Let's take a look at the lineup. So let's see, let's see what we got for our tanks. Oh, what a surprise. Ding plays with i7 and e5. Well, uh, there is one change in Ding tactics here. They dumped 113 for one uh, i7. Yeah, I, I guess <laughs> after that trouble with Hellfish in a, in a game against Knekebru, they realized that uh, i7 is actually better on that position. So we can even draw a map by the, what will they do at the I moment. I can give timestamps of their rotations. And uh, Rage Quit with two TVPs, four bad shots again. Now an RU instead of an RD. Still not a fan of two TVPs, especially not on the attack. Yeah, they're kind of sticking to those two TVPs, and I don't know why. They didn't serve them at all in defense, and honestly, here in offense, well, once you push, if you push the woods and you meet the enemy there, it's fine, but we already know Ding will not be there. Are you sure, though? Oh, mind plays are coming, plays. No, I don't think they will be there. I don't think so either now. The question is how Rage Quit is going to deal with it as our teams are ready. So let's get into it. It's going to be the second round between these two. Ding now on the defensive side. As we said, Rage Quit on the offensive side. It's going to be to them how to break this defense from Ding. Let us see. Are they coming to the sides? Do we think so? Uh, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, Ding is changing it up. <laughs> hola, hola, why, why, why? 
<laughs> no, but they do it. Sometimes they go like that and then they just return after. Well, now they're not sending Kuritz alone, if you remember. Yeah, Kuritz was doing the alone spot, but uh, everyone already knew he's doing it. So people were sending people just to kill him blindly. So that did not work I out. I remember well. that position from Shokish and I remember saying that I don't like it. It worked to okay the E5. E5. Actually taking a forest side for a cooldown. That's an interesting one. No, I While Ragequit is doing full... Uh, oh, this tactics looks so familiar. Oof. Let me see. Yield Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> now Kuritz is pushing forwards. He's starting to realize that there's nobody there. But oh, Shokish. Shokish, you are... Cool, please go clear him. Ah, will they check it? Ragequit, if Seriously, you, if are they forgetting to him? check that out? They have to clear him. They have to. I mean, he's being smart so far. He's been trying really hard not to spot anyone they're, because they're that's the only survival it. rate. Like, uh, let's, let's explain, guys. People leave a tank there so he can shoot someone in the back, and he's really trying hard not to spot anyone because six cents would be a trigger for people to send someone like Skills to they're see going. where he is. He's going. Number and one Skills, but he's alone. Yeah, he's going, but also Ding is already there. TVPs have to be ready for this one. Yeah, and Ding should be should be in position to shoot skills if he goes too high up. And he's not in position to proxy him yet. Now the fight is going to be really important on that hill if number one skills can clear out Shokish. It's going to be the... Shokish lands the first throw on number one skills. Now number one skills needs help here. He is going to go down against Shokish. Takes even more. Shokish should be able to pick him up here. If he doesn't, number one skills wins it with 48 but HP. But he had help. He had so he much had help. help. <laughs> he needed that help. Now he is down to a one shot, but they have an advantage here to work with. Yeah, it was a not the best trade for Ding. I would say even a lucky one for Ragequid. But still, Ding has a lot of information for them and even a lot of ground control here. Pure skills that's controlling the top of the hill. He's playing one-on-one -on -one against Kuritz on the other side of the map. Yeah, but Kuritz has a lot of guns there. Oof. Ooh, Kuritz actually get picked up by Gramic there. Was that an ammo rack? He just disappeared. Now the push comes out from Ragequid on the north. They want to catch positive, but Halu is in a bad position. He positive is playing it so well. He, the way he's using that train, but Hulk, he's a little bit more exposed. So much inexperience coming at the moment from the Ragequid after two tanks up. They are down now for... Almost 2,000 HP. Cactus picks up Hulk, though. Making some plays here. Now there comes the TVPs. Those TVPs, you know, big clip, meritorious. If they catch Mary, here. they can clip him out. If they catch Mary here, Gramacar only two, three. Meritorious overexposing there. Just a little bit at E5. Goes down to 174 HP. Now Urvis, can he pick him up? Marakar, no, it's number one skills actually from the side. From the very far back there. And Rage Crit, Mojo, still six guys alive. They managed to turn the game around completely. And a bad play by E5 there, like really very, very, bad play. Very overexposed. Like, it was visible from an airplane that you're going to get flanked and shot from the back. I mean, he had some nice shots down, but he over -welcome, stayed his welcome there, most definitely. And now, situation pretty dire. Breakneck with a dead gunner. And Mrakar with I-7, not very mobile tank. If they realize that break is over there, it's very, very easy for them to overmatch positive. Now, what does Morocco do in this one? There's not much to be done for Ding in this one, realistically speaking. Yes, they have a lot of HP, but a lot of that is onto Morocco. Who cannot even cross the rail safely because exactly. he'll just get tracked and shot from all the and sides. And then break with a dead gunner. He needs to go really close or aim for 100 years to Ooh, shoot with someone. TVP waiting there. Break trying to get a sneaky angle here. Maybe. Oh, he oh, gets spotted he though by Urwis. Good timing from Urwis there, peeking over. Landing two on to break. Now there goes positive. They took the overmatch. As soon as break got spotted, Gramek now clipping onto Marakar's side. And Mojo, which quit is actually going to do it, I think. They managed to pull the first game off out of the ding. So I guess only one game was a gift. I told you, one gift. <laughs> well, one, <laughs> uh, one, one round gift. But this was good by Rage Quit. This I expected really since good. they were admiring Dean so, so much, they would give them four and then just wreck them in tiebreaker. Mm, in good yeah. old fashion. Now Break coming over, doing some damage. <laughs> he gets rammed to death by Urwis. He's like, nope, you're not getting me either. As Gramek picks up Marakar, and that's going to be it. It's going to be making the score all even here. And I don't like that position from Shokish. I said it last time, I don't like no, it. No, no, I, really I don't, don't like anyone left like that alone. It's not good. You can't really cover can, him. They can so Rage Quit can support him much better than Den can. Yeah, uh, I think and he Mary? would actually win a fight one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, he would but win it. But... Uh, it's not one-on-one -on -one game, it's, it's seven-on-seven. On seven. Seven on seven. He's alone. Ragequid has easier shots. You could see that they were very, very lucky to win that one. 
And Ding? I think if Ding just played what they used to play, they would actually win this easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny part, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably <laughs> they would. Uh, but Mary as well, overstaying a little bit. And Positive played it really well there. Who? Not really, but Positive used that train really well. They missed a ton of shells on him. Yeah, that was really good, but then the three from the TVPs, finally, TVPs Mary. used as they should have. If Mary just stayed Mary, safe, they could have won that round easily. Yeah, they had, they would have an anchor there with I-7, and e there would be a big problem there. And I think Kurit's got armor act. No, no, no. He got sure? tripped. Yeah, yeah, he got shot by like three guys. Let's take a look at stats, though, from that last round. You can see here, it's going to be Gramic, actually, in the TVP, who did really well. And then positive as well. He was very crucial. But... <sighs> Shokish, yes, he did a lot of damage, but was it worth it? Honestly, we all both know no. Uh, four <laughs> shots fired, every one of them panned. Pretty high alpha also. Yeah, he would he almost kill him in four shots. Yeah, that's pretty unusual. But that fifth never came because he was shot down by TVPs. Uh, a lot of Ding guys there in bottom seven. Pretty much explains everything. Even with Halu doing zero damage, they still won them Hulk? by far. Positive, see the difference between positive and Hulk there? Hulk, positive's positioning was better and did a lot of damage, and Hulk shooting five times, but only landing two with very close range there. Yeah, not much luck for him. Yep. But Mary, I think that, that was like. You Mary can was the turning like point. Tactic wise, be a shockish being there, okay, that's tactical error by a team. But Mary. That was just a huge That's misplay. That's a player skill. That's a huge misplay. And if, if by you recall him. what Marakar said, he said the biggest thing they can improve on right now is individual mistakes. Yeah, they should not allow something like this to happen. This is something that can happen to a minor team. You cannot go for a major player doing no, opening his flank like this. Better he team. knows the TVPs are in that area. Against an even better he team knows than that. Rage Quit. It's going to cost them more than one game. But yeah. so far, 1 1. We're early in the match. 1 1. Let's take a look at the lineups though coming into our next map here. And there's going to be mines. Now, I am excited for mines. Oh snap, a lot of changes here. Skona T50. That's a kind of a full change coming there out of a ding. Uh, they dumped a T49 completely and they're using two T9s now. Skoda T50 I don't like and Skoda. Visa. It's really big, three shells. It's kind of a TVP with a of one shell left. I, re less. I really like the tier 9 bachelor more there. True, I like it more for rotation, but obviously Ding just has a stopping power in idea because they know Rage Quit likes to but push a lot. So we're going to have to find out what the plan is for Ding as we're now moving into our third round between these two. It's going to be Mines. Mines, a small summertime map with lots of hills, rocks and other cover. The teams start the battle in the usual locations, but the base locations are different. One is located in the bottom part of the village and the other one is in the water. One of the key objectives is the center hill. That's why the teams will often select fast vehicles and tanks with strong turrets for cover. There we have it now. Richard will be on the defensive side. Ding will be on the offense and Mojo. I don't think Rage Quit can go for that hill. It doesn't look like that with this amount of the Clippers. Also, Ding played much more games on mines here, so I don't know, they're kind of more experienced team. But it looks like they're going middle anyways. We've seen Ding so far, they know how to do the boost, so how are they gonna stop this? There we go, break, shockish, positive. All three of them should be able to make it. Now it's very crucial if they make it, they have to make it. Positive. Halu! Just Oof. drives straight up and gets wrecked in that bad shot. He survives though, but Kurit, Kurit is dead. Kurit is dead, but there's Kurit three bad from Ding on the himself, hill. But the bad shots from Ding should now come at the play. Bad shots from Ding, they're all onto that hill. It's not good for Rage Quit so far. Now there comes Shockish, but there's a lot of TVPs here as well. But look at the angles they, they have already. They, they emptied up on Kurit. Kurit have sacked himself because of this. Look at the angles the guys from Ding just have. Gramek drops low now as well, goes down to Breakneck. Pure skill. Getting surrounded there, and it's not looking good for oh, Rage. It's gonna be a shortest game in this season. It, it looks like it. We're now <laughs> one minute in. Seba already going low. Positive dropped off. Has three shells available. Number one skills is the next one. Going down here any second. Hulk has re reload available soon as well. And it does look like this might be the shortest game we've seen so far, Mojo. 
let's see. Urvis is still alive and the clock is ticking, but this is the best kind of defensive play I've seen so far. Ding uh, sacrificing. <laughs> Oh, uh, positive there. Oh, As it is Shokish to pinata. pick it up. Bringing the score now 2-1 two to one in favor of Ding. And that was, was 1 like minute 30. This was like, piñata! That was <laughs> not good from Rage Quit. I, I mean... <laughs> Man, we all know they really like to push there. They know they like to play aggressive. Uh, Ding kind of anticipated it. Koritz, as usual, didn't mind dying. I like he how we care. criticize the Skora, and then Rich could go is like, okay, we'll just make the Skora super useful, gets three shells off, then dies, takes all the shells, which makes Rich could not have enough shells. Yes, and then all the butchers that know how to climb, and not fall this time, let's say positive, climbed now, with full HP, uh, they just greet him. Well, hello, we're here. And the game was pretty much over at that point. The, the remainder of the team of the Ding just pressed the middle, uh, they collided on all the other tanks. All the clippers were stuck on the top of the hill with no shells. There was no one to deal with break them. And Break and Shokish just peeked on Break. Break is behind that rock. Easy peek, shot, goes back. Shokish comes, shot. Nothing to be done for Rage Quit in that one. Pretty short sure and nice game, the way we like it. Let's take a look at stats though, or the lack of stats from the Rage Quit side, probably. Let's see here, Hulk, Shokish, positive. Oh, we actually have Urvis and number one skills on the top page, and that's about that. I would, did Koritz and Pen even all three shells? He'll probably be here somewhere in the middle. I think so. That's like 960 ish. So, Shokish and positive. Two out of the three Bachats that managed to climb on the top of the hill are one of the top damage dealers. There is the breakneck right below there. So, yeah. Yeah, Koritz, round Look 960. Look at this. Halo and Cactus wrecked. I mean, it's obvious. They didn't even uh, hit or pen their shells. The entire lineup from. Uh, from thing was pretty much centered around taking down that hill push. I mean, the TVP, the Skoda, they're all great for shutting that down. You could just see the first bad shot. He disappeared down. and the focus fire was, as always, on spot. And now, Ding on defensive side and they never lost it on mines. Never. And did Rich could ever win it? Uh, defensive side? No, you mean attack? Attacking side. No, zero percent. <laughs> Statistics <laughs> not working for you, boys. Statistics not looking good for Rage Quit in this one. Nope. But they did a surprise now in Prokhorovka. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. Who knows? I mean, can't count Rage Quit out of this one. Never. Maybe they will do some fluffy attack and they will surprise us. Maybe they will surprise Ding. Let's take a look at the lineups here, though. Moving into our fourth round already between these two. Now, Rage Quit, double tier nine, bad shot, Ding. With the Gorilla, T54 E1, another tank we're not a great fan of. Well, again, we there have a change on Ding sign. They dump, uh, dumped uh, T49 and took two tier 9 tanks. Now, we've seen that T54 used in some of the matches. He plays below the hill, so he's wasting for a booster so he can land several shells there. T10, mainly on K4. So, this looks like more water based defense side. I think you mean Gorilla on K4. No, G4. Oh, I thought you said K4. Maybe I did. I think you did. Yeah, I probably did. I'm only going to get my ears cleaned out, but now can Rage could do it. It's very hard to beat Ding on the defensive side. It's kind of impossible so far, but <laughs> let's see. There is always a first. There Whatever happens, there is always a first. Now, we're going to have to see how T54 one works out. I guess Kuritz is going to be playing that one. Yeah, we've seen him on Ghost Town. He did like 3k damage there, but... Uh, here, you can really easily misplay it if someone manages to climb the hill eventually. It does seem like our game is ready, so let's get into it. The fourth round between these two. Like we said, Ding on the defensive side and Rage Quit on the offensive. And Maraka playing the T10, Kuritz the T41. No real surprise there. And they're actually going towards the hill, Mojo. What a surprise. What a surprise. This could be bad for them. Triple but, boost? Uh, but uh, Ding, usually. Yep, like they go. did this several times already, and they would usually put the grill right there below them, waiting for someone to try to climb up. Nice triple boost here, but it doesn't matter when Rage Quit just pushes the hill like this. Like, what are these bachelors going to do? Four, 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 people four. Boost. But there's f there's five from Rage Quit Mojo. Positive already ran down. Pos but Shokish hits the rock. Get if he gets tracked, here. he goes down here. Does he get tracked? He get doesn't get tracked, and he goes <laughs> down the hill. Ooh. Oh my God, lucky Ooh. guys. But Hollow in return, there comes the counter push from whoa, the counter push from Dink just straight over the middle, picking down Hollow now. Number one skills is the next one already. 
There's always another option for Dane Kuritz now getting tracked as well. He should go down here, pure skill. Taking one re summon return as well, and number one skills should be going down here as well. Rage skill, Rage quit still in slight advantage here, but it's kind of melting away. But Mary is melting away as well as we say that. Oh, the close game, but a lot of clippers here on Rage quit. Let's see the reloads. Most of them, except Seba, are now on reload. But, but is there enough break. guns? Is there enough guns even on Ding to do something about it? They really need to get some kind of crossfire here and leave this kind of engagement. It's not working for them. Number one skills being alive is very crucial at this point. That 1 1 3. You can land one more shell here, be very crucial. He has a nice hold down there, lands another one. Nice. Hook only having two left. He needs to pick up number one skills. It's going to be Shockish from the side, though. Gets traded in return. Now Shockish break all one shots. Hulk one shot as well as Urwis picks him up. And Mojo, it looks like Rage Quid is going to be doing it again. It's just so simple tactics, and I would say Ding even killed themselves yeah. here by overplaying it. But I like how Rage Quick really has no respect, fear. no fear. Like no they fear. just go, and then when the fight it's starts, amazing. they're all in. They're it's just awesome. all in, mate. And the counter push, Cactus now picks the positive pure skill, is climbing here for fashion points. That's 10 style points for you. Why are you even bothering? <laughs> <laughs> style points, Mojo. Well. Now Cactus is coming down. You see no fear. He wants to close out this round. Just be kind of careful in this one. Break. Break. It's always a chance for break. Like Urwis picks up Shokish though. Break here behind this building. Left alone. Break needs both shells to finish off Cactus. And not even let not even mention the other guy. <laughs> so there's Cactus to but pick it up. Fairy tale is still going oh, on. Now it's 2-2. And I'm going to quote the dead zone. If you don't want to take the hill, why do you go for it? Yeah. Don't mess with them then. Like, uh, this was kind of halfway in for uh, Ding. They I like how Ding <laughs> pushed four guys. Like, really well done, guys. It requires a lot of synchronization, a lot of yeah, timing. It, it, it was really aesthetically nice. It was really well it done. It was like and jumping like, in a water. And there's like know? five guys from Rage Quit there. Hello. Already waiting. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, you kind of and forgot was to cover really the middle. And was slow dropping as well. Yeah, they were surprised. And then they, it was a traffic jam there. And you know, hit the there, rock. Is no, there, is, there is like not enough way to go down, you know? <laughs> they were trying to bounce off each other to do it. Shokish overstayed that a little bit. I think they should have just instantly dropped. There was no there was no chance for them to win the hill. He kind of got stuck, mate. <laughs> yeah, he hit the rock. Yeah. Who we'll put it there <laughs> when you need to run away? Uh, that's, what, that's what Apoa was thinking as well. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, thanks. But break here, trying to do what he can. But Gremek, number one skills. Number one skills surviving on that one shot was very... Very vital. I was really uh, impressed when Ding actually did a counter attack. The, yeah. the first tank of uh, Rage Quit just died. disappeared. He just disappeared from the map, but it's still not enough when they pumped up the shells. But that was Rage Quit did so well. They just pushed no fear, pushed yeah, straight, straight back in. off the hill, and straight killed in. Mary. And um, I think it was Morocco. And I think Cactus stayed and he did a crossfire yep. from the hill. So there you go. Shockish. Hollow was the one that only just one disappeared. Shockish shot. Shock only one shot done. Mrakar not that much further away, but he's a single shooter, so you cannot really blame him. No, but then again, I don't know. Why, why Why did they even play this? I mean, I guess they were trying to surprise Rage Quit with, you know, who's the, who thinks the TVP is going to boost as well. It's but a Ding little bit harder. Also, Ding also played something really similar like this several times. Not exactly like this, but they did push the grill offensively instead of defensively. I think against Rage Quit, some tactics like Rusty Roster would play, this would be the best. It's just park the tanks and wait it out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, come and get much. me, bro. Like, come and get That's me. That's the easiest way to, def to defeat a very aggressive team. You can't beat them with aggression. Maybe they just wanted to end the game sooner, so it's going to be actually later. It because reminds of me it. a bit of Kazna EL, if you remember. Aggression versus better aggression. Yeah, Kazna threw that one for no need. Like, really for no need. Let's take a look at the lineups. They're moving into our next round here. It is going to be Cliff Mojo. There we go. Seven bad shots. Hello. Hello. Nothing changed here for the Rage Quit. I love this lineup. On the Ding side, although, pretty much the same also. They like to play this lineup. They're going to stick to all their old habits, so we might face a brawl on the top of the cliff. There was quite an overmatching last time. <laughs> I'm still laughing about that Mirage round. Ding, super fancy boosting with four guys. And yeah. Rage Quit driving casually. Yeah, points the for the aesthetics, not for practical. <laughs> But now Rage Quit with those seven bad shots. We've seen it before when they played against out of range. They actually played it slow and it worked out. Taking control of the hill slowly, surely it worked. Yes, that's what I meant when I said uh, that uh, we will see some serious 
overmatching action there on the hill, but so as far... As long as Halu doesn't have to climb first, they'll be alright. Yeah, yeah, he, he kind of really flunks that one. But we've seen them. And it does seem like our game is ready. So let's get into it. It's going to be Rage Quit against Ding. Scores all even. On to Cliff. Cliff, the most dynamic map in the league. Battles on Cliff always turn into desperate double-edged fights. Teams start from the same spots as they do in standard battles. The first base is located near the defender's spawn point, and the second is at the bottom of the hill. Sometimes teams split their forces and send several tanks through the 1-2 line to the left of the small hill, but usually both teams play at the center. The attacking team can send one of the tanks up to the lighthouse or behind it. Fast and quick-firing vehicles are better suited for this map, mainly medium tanks, including tanks equipped with auto loads. So there we have it now. Rage quit on the offensive side, Ding on the defense. And Mojo, what do you think? Well, usually they would just leave one guy to monitor down. That would be the probably 49, and everyone else would push. But uh, Rage quit on the other side, yeah, they're doing the same. Seba is staying down, and six guys are going for the hill. Some fancy boosting here again. Well, not, it's not that, not that, it's not that fancy, but you know. They like to do it in a group. <laughs> Peer pressure. But this is this is okay because you have a lot of guys here in the middle, so you can respond from the bush from the push from both left and right side instantly. And you have one guy proxying, that's Hulk here. So this is more kind of standard opening from Ding. Now they're just gonna try to proxy if anyone is climbing and maybe do some cheap shots from that lower side. Seba is already pushed away, so they are taking over that lower plane. But they cannot really push Seba because he is covered by number one skills. And we have, again, a bunch of rage quit guys climbing from this side. Look at the counter push from Ding. They're all crossing over here towards that middle part. This is a purely not kind of a blind play because they are also relying on Sixth Sense, but it's also relying a lot of on info from the Look previous how many place. guys are driving up. Quit. Yeah. Hulk, Mary, Maraca, positive, shockish. In theory, this should be r ultra risky. But uh, practically, they already know how Rage Quit plays. They, they know they'll try to climb from several angles and overmatch the top. So they're just doing that before. And this is not a great position for Rage Quit. <laughs> it's, it's horrible. Hello. It's kind of an understatement. Now they're stuck down. And honestly, I don't see how will they come up back again. Even Break is now climbing towards the hill. And there comes the crossfire already. Maraca peeking over already. And these bad sets are in the downside. They should take a lot of damage here if they want to get away. Pure skill taking. Well, more pure skill taking. So more taking even more. And this is not a great position for Rage Quit. No, they have to go really close here to the hill. So they don't get shot. But uh, Dinky now just put the reload and play around with that. The only guy that uh, can effectively influence the play now from uh, Rage Quit are number one skills in Seba. And Koritz is the only one who can do anything about it. So, in all honesty, if Rage Quit makes a decent crossfire here, uh, if Seba and number one skill just go and pressure the one cap, this can be a really close game. But nice the question is, will they it. even realize that on time? Now, there's a lot of tanks here from Rage Quit together in one area of the map. Careful here. Seba number one skills now spotting out Kuritz. Kuritz smartly adjusting. It's not gonna get caught out in that one. This one. And there comes the push from Ding though. They want to take this overmatch. Pure skill already low. Then they look at the angles Ding has on top of them from that mountain. There comes the push from Ding. Gramic drops low. Pure skill drops low. Pure skills. Pure skills. The first one to go. Ding just taking an easy overmatch at this point. You would say a shockish. It was a little bit over aggressive, but Cactus in return taking a lot as well. And look at that, three kills coming in for Ding at the same time. It's just Urwi's number one skills and Seba left. And Ding taking in very, very easy overmatch there. It's not even fun. As the moment the Seba and number one skills got spotted by Kurit, Ding no, knew they have an opening, so they took it right there and then. Also, let's remind people, when you need to snipe from distance with Bachat, Bachat is not the best sniper in the game. There is a lot of chance you will just bounce something or completely miss. So Ding had everything going for them. Upper position, shooting on tanks that already lost some HP. It's not easy for those bad shots to get a shot from where two Ding was. 
It's such a good position for them all coming from an upper angle. Also, they were driving traps. all the time, yeah. so they're a harder target from distance. And they were shooting guys that were right below them, pretty much static. So Marakar here comes to clean up Seba. Seba trying to play around with the house. That's positive, picks up number one skill. Marakar picks up Seba. And it's all onto Urwis here. With one shell left. And I don't think he can do it as Hook will be the one to pick it up. And I'm making the score three to two in favor of Ding here. And nobody from Ragecar was monitoring that mid middle position. No, uh, they just played it blind like there is no one there. I don't know, they were stuck in their minds in their last match they played on Cliff. But uh, Ding is kind of di different kind of an opponent. They cannot allow this. You, see, you saw how quickly Ding reacted to that. They went one two line. They realized middle's open, drive across. Yeah, five they also, guys they onto also the hill. saw no one is uh, spotting. They pushed instantly. They knew where Rage Quit is. It was, I mean, it was really easy to read it out, especially if they watched the previous WOD, and uh, we know Coriz did it 20 times probably. So, no, this this was not the best play you could do, guys. Not the best play from Rage Quit. You could see there, once those two guys got spotted in the 1 2 line, then came over that hill, and it's so easy for them to win that one. It was a gift. It was a gift. Early Christmas, Secret Santa, it was Rage Quit. Let's take a look at the stats though from that last round. You can see here, Marakar, then Hulk. Not the two you would expect to be there. Well, depends in which, which part of uh, their play style, I mean, play <laughs> career. But uh, at the moment, they had a really good position, so they could do that. On the other hand, Seba number one skills as expected as the last yeah, survivors did the most. Survivors. But it really didn't matter because they were already late for the fight and then when they clipped out it was it was pretty much over. Look at this, Koritz actually in forty nine. You already said it, Koritz is a damage much. dealer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Koritz is a hidden damage dealer. <laughs> Gremek there, pure skill, cactus. Well, Gremek and Hollow were the ones that were squeezed first, I think. So Cactus having a bad day. Not good for my fantasy team. Not good for our fantasy teams. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Uh, poor us. At least you have positive now. True. Do not do damage in this game. <laughs> 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 now, Rich Kid, their clip uh, attack. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the thing is, uh, Ding practically in attack does the same as they do. They leave one guy down, they push with six up. So we're just going to see how will Rage Quit deal with that if they're anticipating something like it. Maybe we'll see some strong push Remember now last here. time when they when played against Oops? They just pushed straight over the middle. Yeah, but they also played the Rage Quit really defensively on Cliff. So we saw them play kind of a tactical game with a lot of Clippers also. But I would like to see what they have. See what they have for lineups, Mojo. And we can see here, Rage Quit. Ooh. Playing with Ooh. an Arza and Whoa. a complete remodeling of <laughs> any kind of light map uh, okay. they ever played. M53 on Cliff. Now, are you going to have to be very, very. An object for 140, an object 430? 430? That can be an interesting one. I mean, I mean I think for Ding that will one just to work, he needs to be at some rock. I think Ding will just push, just straight push. Clean up anything. They just push one two line straight by M53. Do you think they will really push one two line? It's kind of a huge risk if they meet a uh, serious number of rage quit tanks. They they can I mean, really. I think one way or another, Ding has to push. Yet, yeah, but does it have to be one two line? Well, they can also push over the middle, but then they get kind of in a crossfire, depending on how rage quit sets up. Hmm. They can do a combo also. Yeah, and very interesting to see who plays that artillery piece as well. But it does seem like our game is ready, so let's get into it. Can Ding make it match point? Is Rage Quit going to bring it all even again? Let's find out. As we said, Rage Quit now on the defensive side, and Gremek seems to be one playing that M53. Well, so far, we didn't see a good play by Rage Quit in defense by Arti. They already picked it on Prokhorovka, that Lorraine. They didn't really work out. Uh, but who knows? One lucky shot. One lucky shot could change the match. And a lot of wheels can fly around here. Now, how is Ding going to approach this one? Everybody towards the middle. Okay. Sure. All together, stick together, team. Oh, pure, pure skill. Poor guy in the 140. He's the one being sent forward. Rage Quit is really just playing a circle around the Narty. And this is what I thought, that they will try to climb that 430 
behind the rock up there because then he can angle and do really good damage. But they completely negated the fact they are open for a push with tanks so much split apart. Look, they, they're, they're even not shooting back. There is the push from Ding already. Now pure skill goes down. Halo is forced to drop. What do they do now? The game is already over. <laughs> do not... <laughs> you no, know, Mojo, it's not over quite yet. <laughs> okay, RT will one shoot someone now. RT has maybe to not one now, shoot maybe somebody now. now. Or now. No, no nothing. so far, <laughs> nothing. Gramek is still on reload, Mojo. But it is not looking good for Rage Grid at this point. Urvis in that TVP dropping low. Cactus does pick up Marakar. So that's something going for them. Now, Gramek has reload available. Needs to one-shot one of these guys. They lost the high ground. That's a really big problem. They played in a start like the Ding would give them 30 seconds heads up. Oh, Cactus. And Cactus getting oh, wrecked Cactus there. getting pushed by three guys from Ding. I don't think, like, uh, Gremek even knows where to aim at the moment because Ding is all over the place. Ding is all over the place. Like we said, Ding has to push. And they did push. They did push really well now. Gremek, good luck hitting any of these bad shots. I mean, if you want to play with Arti, you kind of have to play a focused defense at one moment because you you must anticipate the push somewhere. There goes number one skills. They do treat Uruis in return. Now Hollow in that 430 gets spotted again, goes down and ding. And just have the entire upper side control. Looks like they're coming in for the finish here. Uruis goes down. It's all onto Seba and Gremek. Seba, too many tanks, too many firepower. And the RT is going to be the last one standing. Does hit Shockers for 730, but at M53 really did not work out here. There's only Poor five guys from Ding coming for him. And that's going to be Hulknik closing out the round here. Ding now 4 2 up. And that was very weird. That well, was it was reared by Rage Quit. I mean, theoretically, you can always say, okay, this 430 will have a good position here behind the but rock. The 140 this never got into position. Yeah, because. Why would they let him? <laughs> it kind of, hey, takes time. I mean, Ding is not AFK on spawn for 30 seconds and letting you do it whatever you want on Ding a map. Ding was going to do either of things. I either push the middle, I either push one two line. Yeah, but it's like they let them. Why did, Why were they not stick together team also? Like six guys on one spot and if uh, Ding pushes, then shoot, shoot, shoot all the time. What was this? Great explanation, Mojo. I like, I like the hand singles. Shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> oh, T-Rex. <laughs> Oh, wow, that was a low blow. <laughs> no, that was like really cool. <sighs> Come on, T-Rex dominant uh -huh. dino. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at stats, <laughs> Mojo, at the same time. You can see here, number one skills, doing a lot, but positive. Hulk, shockish. Ouch. Ouch. I mean, honestly, I'm more interested to see did Art Ar even splash anyone entire game. He hit shockish for 730. Really? Yep. Right. In the end of the game. Oh. <laughs> so he was not completely useless, but uh, um, wrong play, just ultra wrong play by uh, Rage with here, and I don't know, kind of for a cliff, giving up on their original play style. I know they're trying to surprise Ding here, Wait, so he they're really zero? thinking out of the head. He actually did zero. Yeah, that's why I say like I really didn't think he wow. he connected anything. That's not good. Look at his hollow also, zero. But he almost climbed also. <laughs> You don't get points for style, guys. Not in a game like this. I thought Cliff was going to be Rage Quit's map. Uh, maybe at least for one game. I was expecting some hard I push. I if they did like a very hard push, seven guys together, it's very hard to deal with. We've seen it before. But this, it's not their style. It's They're really just not. trying to think out of the box to surprise Ding, but you cannot surprise the guys that have so much mileage under their like... Uh, yeah, the only thing that can surprise them is pure aggression. Yes. Like, if you do something so bold that no one would expect, that can surprise them. This, you're not going to play them stationary. Sorry, boys, but match point for Ding. Match point for Ding, indeed. That is Cliff done and dusted. Now we're moving into Muravanka. Oh, Bushvanka. I hate the map. Uh, wow. it's too, too many bushes, mate. <laughs> it's magic forest, magic bushes, magic this, magic that. And everyone is shooting and no one gets spotted. Except maybe one guy in the front line. It's great skill, though, clearing out those bushes. I actually liked on Murovanka how these guys handled it last time. Rich Mate. grid. Yeah. yeah it was brilliant. Great. It was a brilliant game. I, I liked it. But it's like one time work. again, though. Yeah, it's not going to work in the same way. No, no way. Uh, to remind everyone, last time when they were in attack side, they just entered the cap with three clippers. Four were really close to it. 
And when out of range kind of wanted to counterattack them, they just they cut it over them and killed them all. <laughs> it was <laughs> bloody amazing to watch. Let's see if we have seven bad shots again for our tanks. Let me look at the lineups here. Oh, oh, yeah. oh snap. Hello. <laughs> oh, please. Just if anything, Rich Grid, I want to see them play fast. You know, I want to see them want to see them go head on with Ding. Back to their style, back to what we expect from them. Ding playing much more cautiously here. E5 is an anchor, 3090 spotter, and everyone else on the Clipper. So they even don't have an STB or anyone who would cover from the cooldown because they are maybe even anticipating this kind of a push. I just don't know why they didn't even pick up a 57 instead of E5 here. I think that would be much better. Can Rage could go for the same push though? Nah, it's kind of. We'll have to find out for Rage Quit if they decide to go for that push again, but Ding, I mean, it's going to be a standard start from them. I'm really looking forward for some uh, big surprise by Rage Quit here. Maybe seven tanks or somewhere. <laughs> Let's find out, because it seems our teams are ready now moving into Moravanka. <laughs> There we have it. Like we said, Rage Quit is now going to be again on the offensive side. Ding on the defensive side. What do you think? Is what Rage Quit we're gonna get? With these seven mediums, if they go in static play against Ding, it's not gonna end up well. We know that already. So, what are their choices? Does seem like they're moving all together, Mojo. It's a stick together team moment. Maybe they will just all go in cap, seven of them, and then <laughs> counter attack. We already seen Alien being taken out in the last game. Alien got really taken out by the guys coming here in the cap. But Breakneck, much safer spot here. Look at the distance thing. Look at the distance they have. And they're just gathering up for the counter. And there we go. This is identical. This is identical. This is going to force Ding to make the move here. 3 4, 3 4. That's it. 3 and 4, that's it. Yeah, three guys in a cap, oh, four guys on a corner. <laughs> uh, I was going to be like, more a little bit premature. Uh, no, that's a lot of premature. But all Ding has to do now is actually fight them from one side. It must be from yeah, one side. That. They cannot split. They're not splitting. You can see here the entire team from Ding is moving towards the other corner. Number one skills, Gramic Pure. Oh, they're going to be in so much trouble. And look at that. They're coming towards the other side. Oh, Mojo, they have to react very quickly in this one. Now, there comes the rest of Rage Quit. Cactus already taking a lot. Now, this is, needs to be the counter push. This needs to be the moment. Breakneck is the first. This is good so far from Rage Quit. Positive needs to be the second here. They need to focus more. Well done, but so far, Positive needs to go down. Pure skill goes down in return, though. But look at the angles thing has so far. This is much better than out of range. They have, they have the guys still alive. And I don't think this is going to work quite yet. For Rich Quit. Ding still has their constant shooters, plus Koritz will chase them. TVPs are reloading faster. I think they will give a chase here because they should. They have an advantage in HP, but they should not allow them to limp away and do more damage when they regroup. So every shot Ding does now will be something they have to deal with later, and it's cheap because they cannot retaliate anymore. Hoknik picks up Haludo. That's the first advantage. And in more, they picked up Seba as well. Hoknik again in that TVP. And it does look good for Rage Quit. Ding just reading the oh, rotation. Oh, they picked up Cactus. Oh. Rip my fantasy. <laughs> Gramek taking some on the way out as well. And Ding realizing the play from Rage Quit and making the correct rotations. Yeah, Ding, they just did the most reasonable thing against this kind of play. As I said, I think only if they had T57 compared to the T5, it would be even better for them in this kind of lineup because he can pump up 1600 damage free and probably even reload because he would not be on focus. Yeah, it's so much better than out of range. There was two guys, Shokish and Mary, still on the one line. There was nobody really from Ding that was alone. Everybody was covered in the crossfire let's now. Let's not also forget Ding had a chance to observe that kind of yeah. game and Rage Quit kind of ran out of ideas here, playing identical play again against Ding, like really. Now with three bad shots left alive, Ding is not the kind of team that will, you know, go close out the match. They'll play it out smartly here. You can see they're just taking positions. They know Rage Quit has to come to them at one point. Well, they can play out all they want in the woods at the moment. Ding has to do nothing about it. They even have Koritz. So if they pressure a cap somewhere, they can always send Koritz followed by other guys. 
at the moment really easy game for them, but they're just using Kurit to spot the one line, so they cannot get uh, cut off from that side. Because all the other guys are just covering push angles. They're not even bothering with two cap, they cannot see it. They're just looking for tanks at the moment. And if someone goes two cap, they're gonna clear him later by just pure raw power and HP they have. They're playing the game of who's gonna be the first one to move. Oh, Mar Marakar lost. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Dips. laughs> I can see, I, I mean, Rage Crit, they're trying to get back an advantage here, but Ding is not going to give it to them. It's not going to happen. They won't drive, Ding won't drive forward and give the chance to Rage Crit to come back. Well, Rage, Rage Crit is hoping and hoping and hoping that Ding will be reckless, but Ding knows very well, hey, we are defending, we don't have to do anything. Man, I'm lucky I saw the breakneck, at least that. <laughs> but positive is down as well. Why is He's not in my team. Why is Shokish and Mary sniping? Go in first. Oh, our points. But now Rage Grid is starting to move. Realistically speaking, yes, there is always a chance in this one. But it is a very, very small one. It would kind of require a miracle and a couple of armor X. As <laughs> I don't see it happening really. And a whole lot of misplays by Ding combined with those. Maybe if you put on your glasses, you might see it happening. <laughs> Maybe if I take them off, it might happen. <laughs> <laughs> here, Ulvi is already getting spotted. Can somebody land the shell here from Ding? Nope. So Ulvi is kind of get saved, but they can't really cap. They can't really do anything in this one. Yeah, they just have to try to fight till the end. That's uh, commendable. But in reality, their options are so limited and horrid that I don't see a way out of this. Sooner or later, one guy will have to pressure that cap, but uh, they, they get so many more tanks, they can do whatever they want. Time at one point will start being an issue as well here. And there we go, number one skills. Checked out. He knows. No one is spotting the bottom part, so there is no trap. But uh, Ding would even have no reason to do anything like it, because they already have positions they need. So Skills will just try to peek out through the bushes here, check out is anyone close enough for him to spot, which of course we know that will not happen. And then the cap, probably Urvis, I guess, will have to trigger it. Whoever they put on the cap to have been easy rotation for Ding to the northern side, a B line, to behind. They need one guy with where skills is, they need one guy of cap, they need one guy where Urvis is. And they need three extra tanks. Yeah. <laughs> one or two more would help at least. <laughs> now Gramek gets spotted here. Honestly, I think if they wanted, they could even push them by now. Yeah, I mean. They're just taking it easy, not risking because they don't know where skills is. Skills is the only guy who didn't get spotted yet. So they know Urvis is in that area below in the middle. They know where Gramek is, but kills the guy with the most HP. They're waiting to see where he is before they do any kind of commitment. But now, now they should know, because shells came to Mrakar. So they should have the full info, and I think they should even push now and close the game, because all the shells by skills were shot already. They know there is only two budgets, but they really don't care. Look at this. I mean, it's a, a sign of a good, like, great team. You know, being able to put up the patience, knowing you're in such a good position and playing it out still. You know, we've seen a lot of teams that don't play it out correctly that sometimes get called because of it. So Yeah, but if you push like uh, four tanks down now, when you know that one budget is in reload, you just close the game. There is no way to lose it that way. Number one skills get spotted, loses this gun, loses even more. Oh, that oh. budget is taking a lot. He's going to lose a head if he goes like this. Oh, <laughs> Batchat <laughs> Armor strikes again. <laughs> Batchat Armor strikes again. And number one skill survives that one, but without a dead gun, he went from being the high, <laughs> highest HP on this team all the way back to the lowest. See, guys, you can do bounce missions with Batchat. Oh, wait, they're mediums. Never mind. Now, Gramek is a little bit too close. Don't think it's going to work out well for him. Raka now comes over, picks him up. Urwi's number one skill is the last one standing here, as it looks like Ding. 
Now they think it's time to close out the game. They've waited long enough. Number one skills is on reload. Urwis also trying to take some distance, but in 1 minute 30, thing is just coming to close out the game. This is... Well, we saw it's an ending a couple of minutes ago. It's just a matter of time <laughs> before someone washes the tank in. Really? Uh, uh, really? Uh, is he going to drop? I think he wants just it to survive or something. Urwis picks up Hooknik though, so at least a little bit of coming back in favor here, but there's so many dang tanks. Shokesh should be the one picking up. No. Oh my Only god. Only tracks him. Now number one skills. I wanna see how good that Batchard can swim. Will they even find him? He, he may emerge and actually kill someone because he's not spotted there. <laughs> he might come out of the water like Batchard submarine. Surprise! <laughs> Will he get married from there? Nope, oh, no, no, <laughs> Rakar Rakar found him. and Koritz will be the last one here to pick up the final kill as Urwis goes down. It will be Ding picking up the match, 5-2. to two. Congratulations, another three clean points there. Uh, it was highly expected, though we didn't expect Ding to struggle on some of those rounds. Like that, mines were kind of confusing while they were trying to run away from the hill on top of one another. But Rage Quit brought some nice plays and some kind of... Uh, I don't know. Lame plays with Arti. It's not there. It's not for them. Guys, don't play with Arti. It's not for you. No. This play 